So I'd like to welcome everybody to our second podcast uh, in a series we call Game Changers. My name is David Porter. I'm the CEO and president of Porter Cock Consulting. And I'd like to introduce everybody to David May. David May is the Associate Vice President of Business Services at the University of New Hampshire. He was a good friend and he's a good professional colleague. And uh, we've had the pleasure of working with David. And uh, a game changer, we define a game changer as having a couple of uh, characteristics and, and David sure meets and exceeds all of these. One is vision for his uh, departments. Uh, the other is courage and oftentimes courage is the element that makes all the difference in terms of the ability and the courage to move forward, the courage to change, uh, especially in uh, heavily politicized environments, which many college and universities are, and also commitment, the commitment to follow through. And uh, so welcome, David. Thank you, David. It's uh, great to join you. Always, always nice to see you, and I uh, look forward to our conversation. Right. Well, David and I had the pleasure, I had the pleasure and the honor of being hired by David May back in 2002. I guess that's some 13 or 14 years ago. It seems pretty hard to believe it was that long ago. But uh, a couple of things occurred back then when David brought us in. Uh, you were in the process of uh, constructing this beautifully uh, very large and beautiful Holloway Dining Commons that was becoming an addition to your Memorial Union building in the, in the heart of campus. You had two other dining locations on campus as well. And we looked at all three of those, but when we presented our recommendations, you know, there's, we kind of uh, have a little fun with this, but, you know, David uh, has talked about this at Nake House meetings, and he talked about how when he first read that report, uh, some of his thoughts he didn't share, but verbally he basically said there's no freaking way we're going to do this, and I was hoping, David, you could spend a few minutes to just kind of tell us what it was like, you know, before you brought us in, and kind of maybe a little bit about the process, and then, you know, kind of what happened since then in terms of the new program and, and how it really has helped transform your campus. Yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were we were at a crossroads with with starting up uh, Holloway Commons, a new dining hall, uh, and we really, you know, I. We had the old kind of meal plan system, the old 19, 14, 10 meal plans, and was really struggling with uh, what I would call the value proposition. Right. You know, missed meal factor, and, and students weren't, you know, were, were saying we were, you know, essentially ripping them off, and they weren't getting value of the meal plan and such. And so, really, we engaged uh, David's firm to come in and, and really, you know, take a hard look at our customer and really help us make some decisions on what we should do from a from a meal plan perspective uh, going forward. And I think did a fabulous job. We, you know, they they did focus groups. They did uh, uh, an incredible survey that you know was so highly participated uh, that you know the data was really good so this this was this was good and I, I like to make decisions on on data but this was one when David uh, and, and you know to be honest with you I, um, I decided I, hey I don't want you to tell me ahead of time tell the whole team tell me all once in a meeting and so we're sitting there and in fact my boss was in the room and you present this thing and and seriously I you know he and I kid back I, I said no freaking way <laughs> it's in the back of my mind but um, those of you that know me better I probably was using more of an f-bomb uh, <laughs> and such um, but you know um, as I as I do a lot of times uh, I need to sit back and process a little bit and so I took a day or two and I finally just came to the conclusion that you know what the heck Let, let's Let's listen to this. You know that the data was good. Um, you know it looked like the students really, you know, this was the right thing to do. And um, you know we went ahead and I said, okay, let's do this. And you know as I look back at 38 years uh, in in this business, uh, I took a little hiatus to healthcare for four years. But you know 38 years in the business, this is probably the most uh, the best decision I've ever made um, across my whole career because the end result has just been incredible, and you know we'll we'll talk about that as as we go along today. So, Dave, talk a little bit about the kind of the old value proposition of meals and uh, block meals, uh, unused meals. I remember one of your one of your management team had mentioned that. 
you know, we could put just about anything on the shelves in the sea store and the students would buy it because they just wanted to burn through their unused meal plan blocks. And then the new and the new value proposition of literally being able to come anytime they wanted to, even if it was just for a slice of pizza or just to hang out with a friend. Yeah, I, you know, it, 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 it was, it was this, you know, mentality of, um, I, I was just worried about, um, the overall satisfaction of the program, right. and, and you know, when when you have a 19, 14, 10 meal plan, and and they actually are eating, um, you know, 50 or 60 percent uh, of the meals, there's a value issue, um, mm -hmm. and so we we needed to create a system where one that discussion went away, and two, um, students' participation in the program. Um, you know, would increase, right? And you know, that's that's really what you know what happened. Um, and so when you know that first year that we did it, um, you know, I, I wasn't really worried about that first year. It, it, like anything, that it was change. And so you know, you had a certain amount of faction of students that were complaining about the new requirement, yada yada. But what I always wanted to know. From day one, what was going to happen in year two, and what would happen in year three? So at the time, what happened in year two? A thousand more students bought meal plans than the year before. And those and are voluntary. Year, what's that? All voluntary. Yeah, that was voluntary. Okay. Okay. And then the following year, a, another thousand. So in wow. two years, we increased our meal plan participation by two thousand students. Which That's fantastic. Just, I mean, it was incredible. And, you know, to the point where now uh, in 2000, fall of 2015, if we dial ahead, this past fall, we sold 11,041 meal plans, which was, it's about 4,000 more meal plans than we sold back in 2003. That's fantastic. The first year. And, uh, over a thousand students buy the anytime dining plan mm -hmm. voluntarily. Which does, is does, that in, does that include upperclassmen and students living off campus? Yeah, it does. Right. It does. Um, you know, so we're up to eleven thousand, and within that eleven thousand meal plans, yeah, we have um, we sold like two hundred uh, faculty and staff <laughs> meal plans during that time. But we actually have over six hundred faculty. That have meal plans, and uh, I, I think that's that's a pretty pretty good number too right. for the campus. Well, a lot of campuses are looking for ways to better serve their faculty, and sometimes they want to do that in a separate venue or a separate dining room. Right. But has what have you had any surprises in your kind of you know that old value proposition versus a new? Do you find that more faculty and staff? want to participate more in this new dining program in this new facility than you thought maybe before? Oh yeah, absolutely absolutely. You know, and it ha it has to do with the with with the program right. um, that we've developed, you know, over time. But um, you know, we you know, I I've, I've been very fortunate. I got to build a, a new building. Um, we've renovated um, the other two dining halls. Um, right. you know, and I just finished up um, adding uh, 300 plus seats to Holloway Commons, uh, so we're up 1,200 seats in the venue, um, and uh, you know it's it's just great to see faculty and staff essentially breaking bread with students. It's it's really a, it's a great thing, great thing for the campus. It's a good social scene. Right. So talk a little bit about on-campus housing and off-campus housing. I know that's one of your areas of responsibility yeah. now, yeah. and how has you know, I mean, students obviously have the opportunity to select from inventory off campus, probably pretty new, very nice, all with kitchens. Uh, do you find that you still have the upper hand in terms of where students want to live? I, I'll tell you, I still am kind of shaking my head on this one. Um, in the last um, five years, there's probably been 2,500 uh, beds added to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, almost all, you know, single bedroom, many with private baths, um, and so 
you know, I, I've been really concerned about what's going to happen with our occupancy on campus uh, for housing because it's a feeder to the dining program. And this past fall, uh, in our residence halls, we were at 111% occupancy. Um, and overall, 108%. So we even in our apartments, uh, we had students in, in built-up conditions. And those in the apartments is, is kind of uh, voluntary. But I, I'm just, I really am flabbergasted. I, I just shake my head. I don't understand. Because I really thought we would struggle with occupancy. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, we just closed out um, our uh, um, returner campus sign-up. You know, students that are in the residence halls now to return in the fall, I have 200 extra contracts than I did a year ago. Wow. And I've got 40 students on a wait list. Mm -hmm. um, so that piece, and, and the other thing that we did to compete in the marketplace in the apartment game, our apartments went to market in the fall, just like everybody else in downtown Durham. And our Gables apartments, about 11 or a thousand beds, 1,100 beds, sold out in three days. And so um, I, I just, you know, we're we're riding a great wave. Um, things are going really well, um, but I but I really believe that you know this whole dining program helps contribute to that. Not only do students who have decided to move off campus still want to have a meal plan because they don't want to, you know, wash dishes and go grocery shopping mm -hmm. on, a, on a consistent basis, but on top of it, students want to stay on campus and, and participate in our program, and I, I, I think that's uh, it's a testament to the team. My, my team just does a tremendous job. I'm very proud of them. That's fantastic. Do you find that once students get on this meal plan, the anytime dining plans, and, and I know you have block plans as well, do you right. find that more students stay on those plans longer now throughout the three or four years they're on campus, yeah. whether they're li living on or off? Yeah, I mean, our enrollment uh, probably, you know, I, I that number, depending on who you're counting, um, but undergraduate enrollment is probably about 14.3, and we have almost 11,000 of them on meal plans. Uh, you know, I rest my case. Wow. It's, it's, it's really incredible. Um, and, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's going really well for us. And uh, I, it, once again, I, I, it really goes back to that decision we made back in 2003 in the spring, I guess. Uh, and, and it was a lot of pain, you know. Um, one of the recommendations David made to us is that you know you really should go out and promote this. So, you know, essentially we went on a roadshow that spring term, and we went to every single residence hall, and um, you know presented what we were going to do, and you know for the most part, um, it, it the conversations went great. But there were some conversations where, you know, I'm not going to repeat what I was called at one of the meetings. You know, there, there's all, you know, change. It's some people struggle with change, but, um, but all in all, you know, things went really well, and uh, the programs, what it is today, is, is, is really a tribute to that decision we made based on your recommendation. Thank you. And how, you know, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, one of our number one guiding principles, and I know you believe the same, is student success and how to help students be more yeah. successful. And certainly we believe the more opportunities they have to socially connect and interact and come together serendipitously and make friends and reinforce friendships. I mean, is Holloway and your dining venues more uh, central to that type of activity today than it ever was? How's that evolved on your campus? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I, you know, the measure of success is the number of meal plans sold, but it's right. also, you know, if you sit there, you know, I, I love just sitting in the dining room, and sometimes I just sit there by myself and I just look around, and what do I see? I see a sea of people smiling, having conversations, um, you know, enjoying themselves, and moving in and out and flowing around the operations um, and it's all three dining halls. The students are just having a good time mm -hmm. and I think it, it absolutely contributes to their academic success. Um, I think it contributes to the you know the whole social scene of, um, of the campus and 
um, uh, you know, it's it's really a fun thing to watch. Right. And how is this, uh, or, or do you believe that your dining program in any way and what you built here over the past 13 or 14 years, has it helped with the, let's say, uh, recruitment and retention of students in terms, does it give your, does it give UNH a competitive distinction against its cross-applicant schools? Yeah. I, I mean, I think so. I, right. I, in fact, I know so. I mean, I, dining is, you know, I look at it, you know, kind of, dining is one of the pillars for recruitment and retention. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, from the, you know, deciding where you're going to be, um, I kind of, I look at it and kind of say, you know, the academic experience, if you put your effort into it, you're going to get a good, good experience wherever you, you're going to be. But then there's these four kind of things. Are you going to be safe? Um, where are you going to eat? Um, where are you going to play? And where are you going to live? Right. And if all those things are good, uh, you're going to have a good experience. Um, you're going to take care of your needs. Um, you'll be able to spend time to take care of your academic needs. And such, but I, I think our dining program is a huge um, driver of, of both recruitment and retention. And uh, you know, the recruitment part. You know, every year at orientation, um, you know, parents come up to our table and say, you know, my kid picked UNH because of the dining program. And I always say, geez, can I get that on tape? That's <laughs> a really good. That's a really great thing for us. But you. Uh, you know, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a big big driver for, for that. So so looking forward, you know, I'll look to you. I mean, what, what do you yeah. see? You know, where do you want to take your program now? What's the yeah. future of dining at University of New Hampshire? Yeah. yeah. You know, I think the big thing, we, we've signed on to the Menus of Change, um, which is, uh, 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 you know, an, uh, essentially a group of schools that have, are working with uh, the Culinary Institute of America and Harvard School of Public Health. I really think we need to do more of education for students on how to eat healthier, provide healthier options, um, and, and, and essentially help them make cho better choices um, while they're in um, school so that when they go into their, their new lives, once they leave UNH, that they're, they're grounded well in how to eat healthy uh, keep themselves healthy and such. So I, I think that's a, I think that's a big, um, I think that's a big piece mm -hmm. um, of it. Um, you know, and and, and another um, thing that uh, that worries me, um, and it just came to light actually over the weekend. But this whole uh, there's this whole uh, movement about food insecurity. About you know, there's a population of students at the University of New Hampshire, and and really it's at any school, you know, any school in the, in the country, where there are students that just don't have the means to right. to, to have meals um, on a consistent um, basis and such, and so, um, you know, that's we're going to start a conversation on how we can uh, kind of work um, work toward that, um, and so I uh, that that's worrisome. Uh, so I, you know, there'll be more. More to that later on. I, I don't really have anything else to share, but it's it's a concern. Um, but then you know it's um, it's kind of looking at our program and making sure that our offerings um, you know continue to stay exciting. And I, you know really one of my biggest challenges continues to be you got eleven thousand people on meal plans, and we really we have less than three thousand seats. And so, you know, when crunch time happens, it's 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 uh, it's a busy. The dining halls are busy. Um, fortunately, uh, this year the university decided to change their common exam time to Friday afternoons. And so, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, where we used to just get crushed, um, and students really, and that kind of precipitated why we added seats on the hallway. Um, we would get crushed, and so. It's just you know making sure that we continue to have comfort, comfortable dining and uh, continue to meet meet the needs. Okay. And 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 finally, David, you know, kind of, what kind of advice would you share with other uh, uh, vice presidents of business services or directors of auxiliary services or dining directors as they look to create? You mentioned a, a safer, wholesome environment on campus. You know, we yeah. hear more about the value of. Uh, 
a college education and you know certainly I think we believe that there's a strong value in this classroom outside of the classroom that you just described where they can play and connect and study and socialize and really develop those interpersonal skills that are critical for all of us to be successful. But what would you advise uh, your your colleagues as to you know what they should consider if they're looking to evolve their their programs, their dining programs on their campuses? Yep. You know, I, you know, I, I think I think it's you got to look. You got to look for ways to create opportunities for students to get together, and, mm -hmm. and the and the breaking of bread uh, for a meal or a snack. Um, and so it's creating the opportunities. Um, and I, and I think a lot. You know, this whole anytime dining I think is a great way to to uh, to make that to make that happen. Um, and and you you got to be open to change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, change is you know, change is scary for everybody. Uh, you know, there's risk associated with it. Um, but you know, I I would think that you know, over the years, um, any of the campuses that visited our campus to check out the um, this anytime dining and then went forward and implemented it, I think they had a pretty good success um, success with it. Well, good. Well, David, this has been a delight for me, and uh, it's always great to see you in person and uh, uh, in, in, this, in this forum as well. I look forward to seeing you very soon uh, at the conferences. I want to thank you very much for sharing your experience and your successes on your campus. It is a phenomenal success story, what you've done. To think about it, you know, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, you were selling 6,000 meal plans. I mean, who would have thought just uh, 10 years later you'd be breaking 11,000? adding another 300 seats to this uh, Holloway Dining Commons, which, which seemed like a pretty massive endeavor in the first place, but it's just become more popular, selling more pl meal plants to students living in apartments off campus. And, and you made a very interesting comment earlier, you know, that one of the greatest indicators is, of success is just the continuous sale and growth of voluntary meal plants, you know, for, for students, whether they live on or off campus. So thank you, David, for coming. I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. It was my pleasure, David. Always great to talk to you. Thank you, David.